I speak in definition and my word are beyond dictionary's definition. I know you're trying to figure out the figures that are disfigured. This is Tony the Poet. I am with uh, the great legend, the poet, the relic, genius, uh, a good friend, Mr. Harry. How are you doing? I'm good, good, thanks. How are you doing? Great. Well, I've watched a couple of your stuff. Uh, one of the major, major things I watched was when, when you were in Zambia with Bitter Sweet. You did a wow, poem. you're so <laughs> sweet. Oh my goodness. Yes, I did. And, and you did a poem. Uh, you, you say that, if, if I'm, I'm, I'm using the words correctly, it was something you wrote when you met your wife or something like that. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. Wow. You know, <laughs> I almost forgot about yes. it. Yes. But um, you see that that's what happens when people follow you. We, we follow <laughs> most of the details. <laughs> Gee, you won't even know that people that, are following That was even out of Namibia. That was like, that's in Zambia. That what is in Zambia. And imagine, I followed you all the way and, and I watched that. And Wow. <laughs> Gee. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. I don't know whether it's a good way or a bad way. Each time you do your, 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 your rap music or your poetry, I always feel like I'm in Sunday school in terms of my craft. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, <laughs> how long have you been doing this? Um, very difficult to say because when it comes to poetry, I started writing in 1999. So that was more like, but it was very cheesy stuff. But uh -huh. uh, you know, it, you're just bubbling over with emotions or whatever, and you just want to express them. You know, my my first poem ironically was to a girl who I thought was going to be my wife yeah. and I was just uh, we were in a long distance relationship so mm -hmm. I was just writing how um, I feel she's a lot makes me you know how she plays a major role in my life okay. basically and then I went to university and one night I stumbled across this poetry evening mm -hmm. people were sharing poetry and I was just Mesmerized. I was always a rap fan, by the way. From the moment I heard rap for the first time, mm -hmm. I was always a rap fan. Yeah. And it was just one of those things to just look at and admire and appreciate, but not necessarily participate in. You know, because yeah. let the pros do it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you know. And um, <clears throat> so poetry was the easiest thing, the if easiest. I can say that, yeah. because at this evening I also shared. Okay. my little something and it was appreciated and we all had a good time that night and I found I, I asked when's the next time we're having this I think it was the culture or language center that was that hosted it yeah and they said no we're, not, we're only going to have it again next semester and I was like, but why this is this should be once a month at least yes, yes. why what's what's going on yeah and they said well if you start a society mm -hmm then it can get funding and then it, it, can, it can it can run. Yes. So that was how I got suckered into starting the Poetry Society at the university I was, I was, I was attending. Mm -hmm. And the Hip Hop Society was also there, I had friends there as well. But again, mm -hmm. Hip Hop, ooh, that's, yo, that's the, the, the sacred lamp, you know, you know. You, <laughs> that's too you, deep. It's not for us commoners, yeah. you just, you just, they okay. admire what they do and what not. And, um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and that was about 2003, oh, okay. so around then, and then come 2004, I think it was 2004, whenever 8 Mile came out. Mm -hmm. When 8 Mile came out, everyone watched it, plus the, the campus where I was on, it yes. was House and Kwaito, that's mm -hmm. what everybody liked. Yes. And just a few pockets of you know, hip hop, hip -hop. Heads, but I was not into the deep, deep hip hop. Whatever was commercial, whatnot, yeah. if I could dance to it, that's what I had. Mm -hmm. And I started getting into the underground mm -hmm. uh, side of hip hop, actually seeing um, how lyricism and poetry are so tightly related. Together. It's not yeah. just about nice beat and just crazy flows, yeah. but. Um, but also having a So you message. begin to see that hip hop is actually... There's actually a conscious side of hip hop that mm -hmm. actually, uh, that combines a level of consciousness mm -hmm. as well as skill in terms of lyricism and delivery. Yes. And that's where it meets. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thought, wow, this is, this is amazing. So I even distanced myself further that I could never do that. 
Now, talking about that, I, I didn't think of uh, asking this question, but mm. uh, people have seen me do poetry all the time. I've, I've, I was in the studio some uh, of the, I think it was Gaza, and then he asked me like, well, why don't you turn your poetry into, you know, uh, music or hip hop or something? But I am not kind of a hip hop guy, so I, I don't know. Can it still also be separated? Like, can just be poets be poets, and then there are people, and then there are people who can combine both? Yes, definitely. Oh, okay. I mean, people like Eric Badu, Lauren yeah. Hill. Yeah. I don't know why I'm only mentioning the, the females. Um, yeah. Groups like Diggable Planet, if we're going to go way back. Yes. And uh, there's also a group uh, called Hawk House. Yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm throwing out these names. Yes. and. Um, they they are very poetic. If they didn't rap mm -hmm. and they just shared their lyrics, you would swear it was poetry. It was poetry. Uh, and um, so they, there is a place where they can intersect, but yeah. can they be separate? Definitely they can. Can yeah. they work together? Definitely they can. Okay, great. Uh, rappers can be rappers. And and, here, and and this is this is also where I would like to also throw in my distinction okay. <laughs> between <laughs> rap and between rap. MCing mm -hmm. and lyricism, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Rappers, I believe anybody can rap. Mm -hmm. It's just there's different degrees of how good you are. Okay. So you can be, you can rap, and you can be absolutely horrible. Yeah. You still, it's still rap. Okay. Or you can rap and be mind blowing, and your technique and your uh -huh. skill, your delivery. Mind blowing, like people would think, you know, they'll give you god status in rap. And yes. You can be that, and everything in between, mm -hmm. <clears throat> people trying it out and whatnot, that's all rap. Yeah. MCing is another story. Yeah. MCing is being able to take the art of rapping mm -hmm. and really use it to your will, if, if, if I can say that. Yeah. Anyone can use a knife or, yeah. uh, or swing a sword or whatever, yeah. but not everybody is a samurai or a ninja or yes. whatever. Yeah. An MC is like a master of that craft. They can read a crowd and just somehow use the art of rapping in a manner that, you know, would exceed someone getting on stage and just grabbing the mic and, you know, spitting off bars and, you know, just going rhythmically and that sort of thing. Yeah. So there's, there's more to it than, there's, there's more to MCing than just being able to yeah, to deliver your words in a certain style. I have two words before we get to the uh, the part where you give us a piece. Um, the first word is uh, I've seen you do that once in a while. How do you actually use whether it's rap or poetry to speak to the social issues? How does that happen? That happens deliberately. Because <laughs> okay. if I'm freestyling, it's just for fun. It's um, it's just you know, play just just I guess you know flexing your your skill yeah. in the sense that you know when you go to the gym mm -hmm. and you pick up weights you know you you're flexing you're you're, you're working those muscles yeah. and then when the time comes to use them you know you go outside and someone's car's broken down and you can push it yeah. or you can lift something then you're using it yeah. so I like to. I like to exercise lyrically, okay. so which is why I also like to do a lot of collaborations, even with people who are like we might be <laughs> totally, different, totally right? different. But the challenge of how are you able to connect and that sort of thing, or even just in the spur of the moment, or just you know do things. That's my form of exercising. Yes, and a lot. And as I was coming up, so you know, kind of back to the eight yes. mile story because yes. they kind of link. <laughs> When 8 Mile came out, all of a sudden, everyone or every corner I would go around um, in, in, in my community when I was at university, everyone was suddenly a freestyle battle rapper. Mm -hmm. And as the person who grew up as a hip-hop fan or a rap fan, I would look at people rapping and think, don't do that, it's, yeah. you're, not, it's, you're horrible. Yeah. They're still rappers, but they yes. no. And the way I thought <clears throat> was, okay, don't be that guy who just says, you suck. Stop. Mm -hmm. Be the person who puts your money where your mouth is. Wow. So I, saw, so I also took a stab at freestyling. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that I was, I was actually I was good at it, mm -hmm. but in terms of mastery as an MC, I was still way down there. Yeah. So I kind of okay, said, I set in my mind that I'm the status quo, yeah. as in this is the lowest it should be for a rapper. I'm not good enough to 
pursue rapping. Yes. So if you're below my standard, don't quit your day job. Yes. <laughs> We're going to talk about how, how uh, the song and, and the poetry has, has helped you in your own personal life. Right. But for now, what piece are you giving us and, and, and what is the whole background of it? Okay, so, and again, this sort of kind of answers the question that I almost didn't answer now. Yeah. Um, so, when I write, it's, it's to address something. Okay. Um, so, at that time, I wanted to share this is how you you know this is how i believe um men should revere their women mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't be based on conditions ah she upset me and whatnot yeah. you know let's be the, the the strong people where like we can take the punches and still be able to embrace yeah. you know so the pieces that i'm well that i'm piecing together into one piece yes. is um it will be a couple of verses from a project that's going to be coming out um, yeah. that I'm doing with uh, Drafted to Babylon. Mm -hmm. And they, Drafted to Babylon, we, we, we call ourselves that because we, we, know we did not choose to be sent to Babylon yeah. uh, or to be put in society, as it were, to, yeah. to be in the world. We didn't choose that. Yeah. Um, we were sent. Yeah. You know, the sheep among wolves, just, you know, that's where, that's your mission field, go. You know, no choice, we're wearing the uniforms and whatnot, and, and how we execute what we do. Yeah. In this, uh, these pieces are coming up from a project called Into the Shadows. Yeah. So basically talking about, you know, going into the, into the dark places so that we can shine light. Can a fractured sign point in the right direction indulge me a minute? I know my question needs validation. For example, we say we're repping Ubuntu, but when it would count, we finally toss it out of the window. We can't seem to see past convenience and our tolerance is only conditional to our common sense. We label everyone and thing that differs as nonsense and gossip about them like we were some newsstands. Saying they're dumb, they need a new stance. Hypocrisy in the true sense. Hope my train of thought isn't leaving too many loose ends as I'm sharing my two cents. In my mind, I can't deny, practically speaking, we are fractured signs. We can leverage on us having a heavy past and hinge on the present as a reliable pivot to tilt the timeline and lift the future. But if we move the past to the present, the proverbial seesaw will not pivot. And the future's gonna stay on the same level and elevated. Though history books are altered and pen stricken, many are too pain stricken to be present. We can do untold history proud by the way that we write our future history now. Current injustice because of the past is real, but adding extra burdens makes it hard to heal. If all we do is Netflix the past and chill. No longer believe in the belief of believing in ghosts. Not saying that I have a problem with archaeology but the bones in another person's closet will not be stopping me so I live in a nightmare where people refuse to hang with a genius but rather a pseudo star hoping that they're the genie that's gonna help them and their peeps turn up in ways that'll make their ancestors toss and turn in the graves because they gave their lives so that we won't have shackles and chains but we put them back on because we are suckers for change not talking revolutionary talking monetary it's scary how we deal on the daily like people are aliens forsake identities traded in for an alias mask mind like chewed bubble gums in the cranium but the training's questionable And I don't bother cause have you ever tried to question a fool? So instead I'm crafting some writing So I can bring some lighting Tapping on both shoulders like a sword Swearing a knight in And this beat I ride like a steed Call it a nightmare Like Freddy Krueger falling asleep is no joke So nightmares are needed so people can stay woke And we were talking about words Correct um, With Let's project this on an African perspective. When I was uh, crafting this concept of poetic moment, I was thinking of finding a voice for youth which are dealing with social issues, social pressure, as much as high unemployment rate across Africa, uh, uh, sexual uh, exploitation and, and all these dysfunctional behaviors that people are projecting and, and, and young people are mostly affected. 
How do you think music, poetry, or performing art actually should actually speak more to some of these issues? That's a nice question. Um, I don't know who said it, mm -hmm. but I heard it from Dr. Ravi Zacharias. Mm -hmm. When um, basically the, the quote goes, um, and I'm paraphrasing, goes something like, let the government and the lawmakers write the legislations. Yes. Right? But give me the songs of the nation. Okay. Let me write the songs of the nation. And that, simply, and, and that was said because they were trying to say, how do we change behavior? How do we impact and influence the youth? It's not a government thing. Mm. It's not a legislation thing. It's yeah. not a legal thing. Yeah. It's not a constitutional thing. Yeah. It is basically where, and I'll use the word entertainment lies. Yes. We and young people, I can say we. Yeah. Young people or people in general, mm -hmm. we tend to gravitate more mm -hmm. to or, or, or lean in to hear what's being said in entertainment. Yeah. So music definitely has a humongous role to play. Yeah. But I think artists in general do not understand the responsibility that it comes with. Mm -hmm. I think artists and teachers are, are, are similar mm -hmm. in the sense that the amount of impact they have on a life yeah. can be taken for granted. Because you have those teachers who are just there for the paycheck, mm -hmm. I've done my job, I've taught the curriculum, what, 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 so many passed, so many mm -hmm. failed, give me my money, yeah. and that sort of thing. Actually, uh, what you just quoted from Navi Gaes, that has been a phrase that has been used by many uh, politicians for centuries. One mm -hmm. of the first people who used it was Hitler. Oh, really? Hitler, when he was conquering the world, he actually said, Give me the song of the youth, and I'll rule the world. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. kind of how it goes. Yeah, so I think maybe Ravi Zacharias was quoting. I know he loves to quote from all these guys. Yeah. And uh, propaganda, the, the spoken word, the American guy, yeah. he said something similar. He said, if your art, whether it be uh, performing art, music, rap, poetry, uh, if it's not answering to secular or social problems, mm -hmm. it's, it's either doing harm. It's either two. It's either it brings solution or it's doing harm. Uh, what point are you giving us now and uh, what is it all about? Okay, so the one I gave previously um, was uh, from a project that I did with Lodima Dreamer. Yes. And it was about, he said it's about Pan-Africanism and that sort of thing. Because I always want to write within the confines of the theme. Okay. I just don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. And um, so that's, that's why it was very... Um, introspective, mm -hmm. me as an African, me as a black man, yeah. Yeah, given all the history that people talk about and that sort of thing. Yeah. But from my standpoint, in yeah. terms of, I don't have to hold grudges against anybody and yeah. that sort of thing. Or even us as black people, we, yes, we're talking about black consciousness and stuff, but the people that we are revering and looking up to and chasing after, it's not, it's not adding up yeah, with this balanced. pride that we're saying we should have. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's basically kind of mm -hmm. where I was um, coming from. So there, it was um, three verses. Mm -hmm. uh, the first verse was called, um, or from a track called Fractured Signs. Okay. Then, um, then there's uh, Ghost Stories mm -hmm. and then Nightmares. Okay. So, I just put them together okay. because at the end of the day, to me, they, they all flow together they all flow because together. they're from yeah. they're from one mindset. One mind. <laughs> exactly. So, well, we're going to even tell the difference. So yeah. I'm going to okay. do the same thing okay. with um, with a couple of verses from from Pastor to Babylon's project. Okay. So the first so it, it, the first one's going to be about hmm, which one am I going to start with? <laughs> it's um it's going to be blame it. Okay. And. Um, have mercy mm -hmm. and God and trust. I know Drift into Babylon. You did an album previously, right? Yeah, called Drift into Babylon. <laughs> Drift into Babylon. <laughs> and and now you are doing Into the Shadows. Yeah. Into the Shadows. So, uh, most of these poems are going to come from uh, an album that is coming. So, you have to look out for it. Uh, into the Shadows, Drift into Babylon. Okay, Mr. Harry, give us that piece.
everything apart from what I saturate my heart with. I'm in denial even when my heart speaks through actions. Like if I lose my temper, I take the victim's mentality and say, look what you made me do because you had made me so angry. And I apply that type of thinking upon everything, insinuating I'd be living perfectly if it wasn't for the testing, attempting to make me lose sight of the best thing. But the testing of the redeemed is subject to match fixing. Listen, there's nothing I've faced without a way out, only not captivating on the proper relationships like fellowship with the Father, accountability, discipleship. So how can I blame it on the sun and how can I? Blame it on the moon. How can I blame everything when I choose what my heart will consume and give room for bad seed to come through in full bloom and when the harvest comes through, I'm caught of God like it is too soon. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of ignoring it, gnawing at my conscience for performing a sorry act, causing my flesh to react and the sin nature calling me back the moment I lack the willpower to fight back. Admittance is the first step towards repentance and a submitting is the prerequisite to successfully resist the enemy and cause him to flee. Now truly indeed whoever is set free is free. A gift from my Savior and his mind to keep. A fee I won't pay though it's far from cheap. I don't deserve mercy but I didn't pay for it. My debt's huge and yet I didn't have to save for it. I was poor in spirit, but inherited his riches. This was the greatest miracle that I have ever witnessed. How did the Lord take a person who died in his sin, resurrected, resuscitated him, and declared him innocent? Now, many would object and say that I'm obsessed with the delusional image of a God that is absent, but I've spent way too much time in his presence to not have experienced his benevolence. But in the same breath, I haven't come close to spending enough of my vapor life like in sacrificial worship. But at the end of my life, the end of my trip, eternity is what I'm going to find in the afterlife. The promise I'm given by the resurrection of Christ. Now, think about it. Eternity is the long time and the memory of this life will fade like a dream does. And this cause of that mentality, I have to be heavenly minded. And finally, it applies to the life and the hope that I am carrying currently. Bought with a price, Christ's blood is the currency, and that there is the hope, and I encourage you to come and see. So God's infinite. Man's most brilliant mind is finite. Physically unlimited, cannot reach him with my height. Move me out of the limelight. It's him we should focus on. Looking for help elsewhere? No wonder all hope is gone. Unaffected by time, his reality's programmer. The one who does not sleep or slumber. When his voice rumbles, it intimidates thunder in him. There is no darkness, even his shadows a spotlight. 2020 hindsight is how he sees the future. Even cherubim always see in him are not used to staring at the Lord with a permanent fixed stare. In one glimpse, commands a reaction they all share. Holy, 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 no blemish is found in him. Omniscient, all-knowing, nothing surprises him. Omnipresent, there is nothing surrounding him. Doesn't even have an opposite. There is nothing compared to him. God. Your heart is bleeding the truth. Your consciousness is the truth. So you can't escape from it. The reality is words are within you. The truth is within you. This is a poetic moment I'm with her. So what will be your last word to young poets, rappers out there and in terms of the whole process of developing? I think I'll say the same thing that I told myself when I was starting out. Yeah. Um, this stopped me from writing or recording projects uh, before I was ready. You know, um, speak from the heart. The lifespan of what is needed and the life of what's just current and trending and that sort of thing. The trending stuff. Yeah. It, it's here today, gone tomorrow. Yeah, it's Next Tuesday we, need, we, need, it's we, have another, we have another hit. Mm -hmm. and, but the, 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 the solid content, yeah. you can play that a thousand years It becomes now. classic. And if you're being authentic, and vulnerable, then you're really touching on matters that can still matter to you even when you grow up. Yeah. In fact, I also like to challenge people. Yeah. If your kids mm -hmm. or your nieces and nephew one day, or even your grandkids, yeah. find out, you're picking them up from school, you're driving home, mm -hmm. and they say, I heard my teacher says that back in the day, mm -hmm. you used to be a rapper, or you used to be a poet, or you used to be a musician, or you used to make music. Mm -hmm. Can I hear one of them? Are you going to start sweating and thinking, ah, which one can I play yeah. that is appropriate for, for, the, child. for, for, the, for the child? <laughs> if, you're, if, you, if you're going to struggle with that, yeah. then you have a problem. Yeah. Mr. Harry, thanks so much for coming through. Antonia, um, thank you.
Thank you. Uh, it is it's a great pleasure to sit with you legends of our times. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying that like in a cliche, no, like in a real thing. You know, uh, we, there are many people, including myself, who still look up to you and just keep on pushing. So what you're doing, you're helping us, a lot of young people out there. So it's, it's like what we were saying when we started earlier, that there are people who are observing our lives, what we do, our talent and everything. And, we have to make sure that that is positive because whichever way we are inspiring somebody, we are motivating somebody. But thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Marcia. Yeah. Yeah.